So when I was in school, one of the things I used to get in trouble for all the time was talking too much. And now you think I have a podcast, I have a blog, I speak for a living. And really what I do is talk for a living. And the classrooms that I thrived in knew this about me. They would try to tap into this. They would try to, to bring that out of me. And I've talked about this several times before, but the reason I bring this up today is because I actually had a great conversation with Deontay Torres. He's recently graduated uh, from a school near Milwaukee, and he's actually the first student I've had on the podcast. Just uh, him and I connected a while ago. He was asking me some advice on podcasting. I was set up you know, through a school district from the wonderful DJ Raymer, and uh, we actually built a connection because of our love for basketball shoes. And we actually talked probably half the time about podcasting and giving some tips. But then we talked about, you know, basketball shoes and we built this really uh, powerful connection. He reached out to me sharing some of this totally made my day. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, you know, young man and just be able to connect with him. And as I'm talking to him, what he really kind of brought out over and over again is the importance of, you know, how in education we help students become their best version of their authentic self. Not trying to mold them into something they're not, not trying to, you know, uh, basically put, you know, make them, you know, many versions of ourselves. And I think that part of the reason we connect is I have certain interests. And what I love about school is you have teachers with other interests and other students connect with them. And, but we all got to know who our kids are, every single one of them. You know, what drives them? What do they get passionate about? What do they get excited about? And you can hear in the theme that goes over and over again when I'm talking to Deontay is really where he thrived is when people brought out his strengths, when they ch try to tap into this. And we talk about education, talk about his experience. We talk about basketball shoes because I got to talk some basketball shoes. Deontay and I, you know, love this and we had to have a little time. His advice um, that I asked him to talk about on advice would he give to educators, students, whatever, is so profound. It's at the end of the podcast. It, it is so powerful and something I've been advocating for, but hearing it from a student really kind of reaffirms the work that I'm trying to do, but it just it was amazing to hear from him to share it. And so I really encourage you to for sure listen to the all the way through to the end of the podcast. You might have to have fast forward if you don't if you're not into basketball shoes uh, for that one part. It was an awesome experience. Uh, and it's kind of always thinking about how we talk in education, how students make a tremendous impact on us as educators. And he did that for me today. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Innovators Mindset Podcast. And I actually have a really special guest here today, uh, Deontay Torres. He just actually uh, finished his school experience and uh, I was blessed to not only uh, have an opportunity to have a conversation with Deontay uh, at a school, um, you know, well, via Zoom, right? Talking yeah. about podcasting <laughs> and he reached out, um, reached out here in West Dallas, but uh, he's near the Milwaukee uh, area. We we're just, I'm wearing my bucks. Uh, stuff just to kind of show off and uh, one of the reasons I asked uh, Deontay to be on here today was he actually about maybe it was like one or two months after we talked you sent one of the yeah. nicest emails to me um, thanking me for my time I was like having honestly the worst day you sent me this email wow. and I was like I know this name and I was like, no, no. And then yeah, <laughs> I don't even know how you got my email. Uh, I'm sure like I'm easy enough to find but you just totally made my day and uh yeah. and we only interacted for a little bit we talked you know we talked education we talked basketball shoes which you know we're both uh big kobe fans and uh yes, sir. We, we could do a whole we could probably you know start our own podcast on basketball shoes <laughs> which you know maybe we'll have to do at some point but um Deontay is actually the first student ever to be on my podcast exclusively i've actually been interviewed for a student podcast but i've actually this is my first time i you know i thought this would be the best uh, way to start this off to have a student. So, uh, Deontay, if you could just kind of introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about who you are and actually just maybe tell a little bit about, you know, some of your school experiences, like, you know, so just people get familiar with, you know, who you are. Yeah. Uh, as you said, I'm Deontay. Um, first off, go Bucks, go champions. <laughs> That's right. Love it. <laughs> gotta, gotta throw that in there. But, um, like you said, I was I just graduated, all on my way to college soon, and like a couple of weeks here. Uh, 
that's really my. I'm, I'm a boring person, honestly. I don't. I'm not really. I don't really do too much, but um, I like reading. I like writing. So those are things that I do in my pastime, just to give you a little bit about me. I'm fan. I'm. I fantasize about books and stories all day long. It's my piece. So uh, that's a little bit about me. Um, as far well, as school actually, experiences, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh. Like I actually, if you if you could talk about like, um, I was blessed to see, um, and we'll actually link it in the notes here. I was actually blessed to see um, you talk about your school experience to. It was your you know your your senior class, uh, yeah. and I saw you were talking. I think it was your principals, um, and you gave like a really compelling speech. And so like, what was that opportunity like? And like, what were some of the what were some of the like main points that you shared on that day? Man. Uh, that experience was one that I dreamed about since being a kid. Um, I would like go on YouTube as a kid and search in like motivational speeches and I would always right. come across um, the ones done by high school seniors at graduation. And I just, I I dreamed about being on stage one day giving, giving that speech and hopefully changing someone and sparking something inside someone to be great. And I got an opportunity to do it, thankfully, and it was amazing. I talk about it still to everybody. I always tell people it's my greatest life achievement so far, and I just I love it. Like as you can see, like I'm lighting up about it now. Like it's yeah, amazing. it's awesome. But um, well, as you said, key points throughout. Uh, I think my main message was to um, to find your people in life. Mm -hmm. uh, life isn't a journey and it, it's not a solo act that's the best way to put it life isn't a solo act you don't go you go through it alone with the help of others so there's always other people around and there's always other people that are a part of your journey that consistently help you and push you to be better whether you know it in the moment or not they're always there and that was my that was my uh that was my thing find your people that was my that was my big quotable throughout the whole thing. I, I I wanted to push everyone there, not even just my, not even just my classmates, but everyone. I wanted everyone to find their people in life, and keep them and hold on to that because it's one of the most beautiful parts of life. Well, the, the one of my favorite clips. I, I told you this before. I can turn anything about basketball. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite clips after. Um, when uh, Giannis won, I'm, I like Giannis is my favorite player right now. Like I, I love yeah. him. And you know, uh, I actually just before I did the podcast, I bought like a Greek national team jersey of of Giannis because you know Greek and it's a pretty big deal in Greece that he won. Um, but he he talked about you know like the the same thing that you mentioned is like how grateful he is that you don't do these things alone and how people helped him and uh, you know just just really powerful. Uh, I'm going to ask you this as a um, as a speaker. Sometimes you know people uh, kind of kind of like you know make little comments and you know kind of like jaded insults because I actually speak for a living. Like I actually um, I was an educator. You know I speak on a stage. And it is a really, um, I love it. And same thing, you, I, I don't go there for um, the, the hope that it's all eyes on me. I wanna help other people. And there's something really empowering about that. And so like, like what, what, what was it that you loved about, you know, being up on that stage and having that too? And it's amazing because I didn't, I, like I always wanted to kind of be on a stage and be able to have that opportunity. I didn't start that till I was like, you know, in my thirties and it's like my, it's literally my dream job that I didn't even dream, didn't even know existed, you know, when yeah. I was younger and you're already starting to do it before you, you're even done school. So like what, what, what made you really like it? And, and why do you think it's actually like, you know, like, what do you, what do you think, what do you think the impact can be from, you know, having that opportunity to, to you know, share, you know, your stories with so many people? Man, um, on it, like, um, so, okay, so, uh, our favorite player that we bonded over is Kobe Bryant, and no, we both know, yeah. he, he loves the moment of pressure, and when, when the pressure is on, and you have to hit the shot, with three seconds left on the clock, yeah. and it's, it's win or go home, and that's, that's what the situation felt like, I've always, whether it's sports, or in the classroom, I've always been that type of guy, that type of player where 
if it's three seconds left and I have to go score and go get a bucket, you can count on me to go get it. Mm -hmm. And it felt like that. It gave me that rush. And it was just amazing. It was it was like a breath of fresh air because I'm, I was uncomfortable. And I love being in, in uncomfortable situations because it makes me comfortable. And just the pressure, honestly, like just standing up there and looking in the eyes of graduates that have been on a four year journey, not even four years, if you count middle school, elementary, like their entire scholastic careers, they've come to the moment that they've been waiting for. And it's on you, honestly, whether they, they have a great final moment. And it's just like that shot. Like I once that. I was up there, it was like I was, I was getting ready to shoot. And once I started talking, the ball was in the air. And I believe I switched it. I hope I did. I might have hit it off the backboard, but I think it, you're awesome. I think it went in. Um, but as 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 it comes to impact for me, it it was it was necessary. I wouldn't I wouldn't be talking to you right now if I didn't do it because I've always had the natural ability of speaking and doing that publicly in front of people, whether that's over Zoom or in person, I've done both. Um, and it's, it was the, it was, once again, it was like the game. I always like look at it as like, it was the game seven of my life so far. Um, excuse me, but uh, it was my game seven. It was, it was my time to show myself and everyone else that who believed in me as well as who doubted me that I was capable and I was prepared to do it. And I, I think I nailed it. So just being able to have that experience, experience is everything in life. So that was, that's, that's the impact it had for me. So like as, as someone um, who, who has been speaking for years and years and years, uh, one piece of advice that I give to people and you, you, you don't need it because you did it already <laughs> is, um, is like, just be your authentic self. I think a lot of times people that go up on a stage they, they almost change personas. And yeah. I think people can see through that. Like, you know, I don't want to feel like, um, now when I speak, it's, it's me amplified a little bit. Like I, you know, I'm not as animated, uh, but it is me, right? Like I get excited about certain things. Uh, you know, I, I love, you know, talking certain elements. You can see me light up when I, you know, things I talk about in your life. And that's one of the things I notice about you is when I talk to you, um, you know, before a Zoom, you know, when we had our Zoom talking about the podcast, and then I saw you on stage, it was like an uh, like it was authentic your authentic self amplified. It was like you know you're I know you're excited. I could tell it's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, you you want to do? I could tell you wanted to do well. I could see you were a little bit nervous, Man. just like you should what? be, right? Because you want you want to, like as you said, you want to do well. You know, a lot of people are going to take away from what you said, you know, you want them to like walk away. I'm, I'm about to uh, leave and speak. And it's the same, like when you're thinking about this, you're like freaking me out a little bit because I'm about to speak to all these teachers going into the next school year. Yeah. And it's the same thing. I want to do an amazing job. So they're just raring to go. They're excited. Right. And now I'm like, now I'm going to have that game seven, you know, game winning shot analogy in my head. So I'm going to be yeah. a little bit more freaked out. So um, it's the mob and, mentality. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you did, you did, su you did such a great job. So I, I was, uh, I was really impressed with it. And, uh, yeah, like, you know, like you're doing this, you know, when you're just kind of finishing high school and I'm like, this guy's like way ahead of me when I was at, like, there's no way I was getting on stage at that, that age. So, you know, uh, it's crazy. Oh, uh, when you speak of like it, making it my own and, and just being myself up there, like I, I went into it with the mindset of, okay, I can't be my normal self. Cause I'm like, I'm a big jokester. Like I love, yeah. I love cracking jokes. I love laughing. That's my, that's the joy of life for me. It's one of the seven, eight beauties of the world. Um, and I didn't, I didn't want to go up there and do that. Like in, in the beginning, I just was kind of I'm like, no, nah, I can't do that. I can't approach it like that. And it just luckily that I, I had this experience. So as we were walking to our seats, I failed in front of the camera, like right in the middle of the aisle. I failed at, and I got right back up. But it was so it was so natural because that's me. That's just yeah. my character. That's just my nature. And that that moment allowed me to relax and say to myself, if I don't go up here on this stage and do it how I would naturally do it, it's not going to be real. It's not going to be mm -hmm. the experience that I need. And I got up there, I was cracking jokes on Mr. Gales. Okay. <laughs> um, 
it was just amazing. It was a great time. I had to be myself. But that, that moment made me comfortable within my own skin to do it how I would want to do it, honestly. So, I, and, and like, I'm going to tie this into the next question. When you're, when you're talking about this, uh, I, I'm like, when I, when I think about education, one of the things I've really struggled with, and I know a lot of teachers listen to this podcast, is I feel sometimes the way that school is set up is that I'm not trying to bring out your best self. I'm trying to mold you into like fitting into, you're going to be a math person. You're going to be into this person. Whereas I'm like, Hey, how do I actually know Deontay? How do I actually know who he is? And then try to help him become the best version of himself. Not, not something in like one of the things when I was a kid, uh, there was so much pressure to like, Hey, if you don't go to college, you know, you're not going to make it in life. And, um, and I, I still see that a little bit. And I, and I think, you know, well, okay, maybe it's colleges for some, and you mentioned that you're going to college, but like, maybe some kid wants to be a YouTuber. Maybe someone wants to do this. Maybe someone wants to do that. I don't want to actually define how they're, how a student is successful. I want to actually help them get to what they want to achieve. I want you like, as you talk about this. And so when you're talking about this idea of, you know, being your authentic self and, and, and being that in you know that speech which was so evident when i listened to you talk and i love that you it's kind of interesting to think that you were actually not going to do that but like how did how did how did you know your experience in school like you know maybe think of some teachers maybe think of like some experiences like how did when you were when you felt like people were trying to bring out your know your strengths the, the abilities you have in the classroom did that help you in school did you ever have that experience in school or did you have the opposite where you felt people were trying to mold you into something you weren't honestly um i was trying to mold myself mm-hmm. I, I always always just like i don't know i just felt like me wasn't being me wasn't going to get me to where i wanted to be but uh i had two teachers uh, I, yeah, eighth grade year, uh, going into the year, didn't know anyone in the school. It was my first time at this school. But everyone else here mm-hmm. was basically there from fifth grade all the way up until eighth. So I was the new guy. And like I said before, I've always, I just love laughing. So I was always like the class clown. I always mm-hmm. made the jokes. I always had everyone laughing. And it was, it was kind of bad <laughs> back then. Right. Uh, I would run on top of desk. I would do anything to get get the laugh of the of the students because I just wanted to liven up the the place. Yeah. And I had two teachers, Mr. Manson. I'll never forget him. Um, and Miss Benitez. She was my Miss Benitez was my English teacher. Mr. Manson. He taught social studies. Uh, so they noticed, like they just noticed my my charisma and my will and want to to make people feel better. But they also knew I had a, a knack and a gift for speaking. And I could do it really, cle- like I had clever ways of doing so. And they tended toward that strength yeah. rather than the things that I wasn't really great at. So like when I was younger, still even now I have some trouble, but I always, I wasn't the best speller. I just always had trouble with it. And they didn't really necessarily focus on those things with me. So when I would write a paper, it was more about the message and how I could present this and, and actually bring this to life rather than the uh, me writing it and it having spelling errors or mistakes. They always worked on those things with me, but they tended to my strengths as far as getting reactions out of people that were genuinely like good for the soul and mm-hmm. just my knack for creatively speaking and writing. Like one time we had, uh, I had wrote this play for, uh, that same year for Mr. Mass's class actually. And it was uh, a native, it was had a Native American theme to it. That was the setting. And when he read it, he, he called me over to the desk and he said, I need you to find the students in this classroom and I need you all to perform this. And just little things like that helped me figure out who I was as a learner and a student. So they molded me, they took my strengths and, 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 and turned me into this almost super student. Mm-hmm. because I was able to approach everything with confidence because I was doing what I loved and what I was actually good at instead of downing me and and, and trying to send me in the direction of what the system wants and us knowing that the system just doesn't work. So it took a different direction with me and I appreciate it. It's, 
It's why I'm sitting here. It's why I'm still here, honestly. Well, it's interesting you say that because when I was in school, I don't know if you can pick this up, but I was a little bit, you know, I was a little bit across <laughs> town. I used to get in trouble, right? Yeah, yeah. And and the thing that the thing that I was told by many teachers the most was you need to stop talking, right? And now I actually speak for a living. Like that's literally yeah. what I paid to do, right? And the classrooms that I excelled at, they knew this about me and they would make sure I wasn't disruptive to other students, but they, they would figure out ways to harness that. They're like, hey, this is who George is. How do we tap into this? As opposed to let's make George fit into uh, a certain element, fit into to something that maybe he's not because it'll be easier for us, right? And maybe easier for us in the short term, but is it better for me in the long term? And so I really, uh, I love hearing that because when you hear about teachers doing that and you know understanding who you are and then trying to bring that out because i've seen the opposite and i've experienced the opposite and, and i can say proudly with only a few of my teachers who tried to like clamp down on me uh when i was and you know like obviously yeah. i i guarantee you there's times that you black you're like okay maybe that day went a little bit too far maybe that yeah. day, right i'm sure you yeah. had that experience too um hey so usually you know kind of as i'm listening to you I always kind of think of the title of the podcast as I'm listening. So like, I'm really thinking about that idea of like being your authentic self and how you're just emulating that. And that's something that's really kind of thematic in what you're talking about. Uh, usually when I do this podcast, it's with educators and they usually give, um, they usually give advice to other teachers, whether it's like later on in their career, early on, whatever. Uh, but it's unique because, you know, you're, you're giving advice. I'm sure a lot of educators are hearing this what if you were talking like what advice would you give to a student right and i'm actually and i want you to think of it this way probably going to clip this out just for you kind of to give uh just that little portion that you know teachers can play for their students like what what advice would you give to students you know at any level that to to actually i don't know i don't know if find success in school um maybe find success in life but whatever like wh what would you get if a st if you were talking to a group of students right now how would you get them to what what advice would you give them oh, even now when i talk to, when i go back to school or or just pop in and say hey what right now it's summer school but i plan on coming back and showing my face a little bit mm -hmm. but um even now I always, the first thing i tell them is honesty you have to be honest with yourself and no one, no one knows who you are completely besides you. Mm -hmm. You can fake it. You can try to BS it. You can, you can do all those things. And a lot of, I know a lot of people who got through high school BSing it, but it doesn't do you any good. You have to be honest with yourself and, and really sit down and ask yourself, okay, am I passing this class because I'm learning the curriculum or am I just have I figured out a way to beat the system? Mm -hmm. And it's it's always nice to get a win, but it's, it's better to win the war, mm -hmm. I always say. So winning the war is being honest with yourself and, and really using those resources. Use your resources. Go to your teachers and be honest and upfront. This is who I am. This is how I learn. And this is how I want to learn. Can we work on something? Can we, can we implement a certain type of off like lesson plan for just me and, and others that learn just like me be honest and and mm -hmm. try to take those steps in the right direction towards actually learning instead of bsing and just getting through and getting by as well as do any and everything you can in high school like the extra curricular activities whether it's field trips or for me like i always had crazy opportunities like going to speak to other children whether they're in high school or whether they're in middle school or elementary school like just taking those taking advantage of those experiences because it makes it gives you a a new perspective on high school so try to change the perspective you currently have if it's not a positive one you know and just be just be yourself just be yourself but don't do it don't be yourself in in hopes of getting back at the system because it, it hasn't done you right mm -hmm. for yourself in hopes of beating the system because you know you can do it and you have the ability to do it. School isn't for everyone. The system isn't for everyone, but you have to do your part in order to change that. And 
you get you you create the change by being honest and taking those opportunities to be a better student. It starts with us, honestly. The, one, so one of the nicest, and I, it, I don't know if it was meant to be a compliment that I've ever received from a student, and it was totally in line with the advice that you're actually giving. Is I was um, I, I would co I was coaching basketball, and uh, I was in the gym at uh, lunchtime, and some of my players were playing. There's like some younger kids. And then there was another uh, a coach who was a colleague of mine who was also you know was also a teacher, and w and I was like joking with her and I was like you know making little fun comments and and one of my players said, "You treat everybody the same." Like, and he, I'm like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "Well, you you always like you always are you like." You, you, you give us a hard time and joke around. I see you do it with teachers. You do it with the superintendent who comes in here. Like, you don't care who it is. I'm like, yeah, no, I treat everyone, you know, like I treat everyone like, yes. you know, I, 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 am, I, I am who I am, right? And it, I, like, it was just kind of a comment that that student made. And when I thought about it years later, I was like, I actually really appreciate that, that somebody saw that in me that, yeah, like I, you know, joke around with students. I joke around with teachers. That's just, you know, my personality. That's who I am. And it's actually, you know, kind of going back to something else you said, uh, it's my way of trying to lift people up and trying to elevate people. And uh, one of the goals I try to create myself and, and probably I know you're very similar in the way that I've seen you interact is I try to be the most positive experience that every, any person I interact with in a day has. Right. Yeah. And one of the reasons that, you know, I want you on the podcast is because you were my most positive experience on that day when not only when I uh, connected with you uh, on Zoom, but when you sent me that email. And so like I that, you know, I think that's your personality. I think your personality, you know, uh, changes people. And so I, I appreciate that. And one of the things we talked about and I'm, I'm going to get off of education now, uh, one of the things we <laughs> talked about. One of the things we talked about and one of the reasons we connected is we both have this like love for like basketball, for like basketball yeah. shoes. And so, you know, like, like, are you, are you like, we talked about basketball shoes that day, right? Yeah. 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 We, so talked, like, to, yeah, we talked about Kobe's, his, uh, his silhouettes. Yeah, okay. So you got to tell, you got to tell us, cause I actually, I always save this to the end because this is where I know a lot of people are like, okay, I'm, I'm done. It's basketball talk, but I, I want to get this in because I love it. But like, like what's your yeah, favorite yeah. basketball, what's your favorite basketball shoe? Off the top of your head, what's your favorite basketball shoe ever? So, so like I'm a, I'm a weirdo. So like I like wearing basketball shoes like just for like casual wear. Right. But like I am I do play like a lot of basketball for like a person that's yeah not on a basketball team. So are we talking just like style wise? Or are we talking no totally totally style wise? I got I got like a style ton wise. of Jordan ones. I got you know uh, oh yeah, style wise. I, it's actually yeah. like uh, it's funny. I actually. Um, I'm in this group that it's called Soul Savvy, and it's all it's all people that really like basketball shoes, and and like I have the biggest feet in the group, and like I you know I have size 13, and none of them play basketball, right? Yeah. They just wear them, you know. And I was like, oh, it's like a whole other thing, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, people wearing Jordan ones, you know, Jordan four, uh, things like that. But yeah, totally not not for playing. I'm talking totally style. Style wise, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for for style. I, I have it on now, currently. This no, let's do favorite. it. I, I love so, it. We're doing show and tell. I like it. So it's messed up right now. I've had this shoe for like almost two years. It was like in mint condition, but like the quarantine came. And like, I'm a person like I have to wear my shoes. I have to do something in my shoes. So I actually started playing basketball in these, which was a terrible decision. But... <laughs> That's here nor there. You're, you're actually, but, you're actually killing me. You're actually killing me. Just waiting for it. Like I was like, okay, what are they? Show me. So the Black Cat Four is the greatest Air Jordan Four ever created, in my opinion. And it's honestly because of the story behind it that I have personally. So I wasn't, uh, uh, really. I don't come from a wealthy family or anything. Okay, I don't have my shoe on. It's all good. But uh, I don't come from a wealthy family or anything like that. So I didn't get my first pair of Jordans. I got my first pair like two years ago when I first started working and like, I fell in love. Like I was always in love, I just couldn't afford them. But as a kid, my dad had these shoes, the original ones. And 
like I just fell in love. Like so, he like, it was his favorite basketball mm -hmm. shoe to actually play basketball in. But I just like the style and the look of it and how the sun hit it. Like it was just amazing. And this one is ten times better in my opinion, the the newer one. Yeah. But uh, the when I seen my dad wearing that shoe, I always wanted it. And when they re-released them. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't pass. Like I had to go get those. So that's my favorite of all time. Hey, I gotta. Ask, how did you get them? Like, did you just go to the store? Like, were they just available, or did you have to wait in line? Like, how'd you get them? So at the at the time, I worked in the mall, and <laughs> I worked I worked at Auntie Anne. So I don't know if you've heard of it, but uh, it's a pretzel place. So they sell oh, yeah, pretzel yeah, yeah, lemonade. Yeah. yeah. So uh, everybody loves it. Like I'm saying, like who doesn't love a hot, warm, fresh pretzel? So I, I knew I had a strategic plan. So I'm a sneaker guy. Like I love yeah. shoes. Uh, so every time the guys from Foot Locker Champs or whatever, like every time they'd come by, I'm like, hey, what's up? What's up? We'd talk. i give them some free food, whatever, you know, just getting in good with them. And, uh, they would always tell me like what's coming up. And I would always let them know, like, I need those. I want those. So when these actually released, um, he actually brought them over to me. Mm -hmm. And it was it was actually it was actually a gift. I didn't have to pay for them, but I did go and buy some other shoes because I was saving up yeah. for them. So I think I got some like Air Forces that day, and like uh, I actually got uh, the Greek Freak ones that day too. But I oh, got yeah. those as a gift because like they just embraced me, and we bonded over the sneaker culture. So that's how I got those. But well, we, everything else I paid for. But yeah, well, that, was, actually, that was an amazing gift. I, I actually just got the um, the Jordan Four um, Oreos. Have you seen those ones? They're like, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I just got those. Uh, Jordan 4, I actually was a big Jordan 1 fan, but I'm like, you got me. I want the Jordan 4s. I love the Jordan 4s. They look really, really nice. I've um, honestly, sadly, never had a pair of Jordan 1s. And it's kind of like upsetting as a person who loves sneakers. Yeah. I've never had a pair. Hey, so it's actually, so when I was a kid, okay, so I got to share this. And this is going to, you have to look this commercial up, okay? Okay. So this is like old school. So there is the Converse. Um, so I lived in a very small town in Canada. There is, uh, they're called the Converse Weapons. And okay. the, the Converse Weapons, uh, Dr. J, Magic yeah. Johnson, and Larry Bird. So they, they didn't have like a, they, they didn't have a signature shoe, but they had like Laker color Converse ones, right? Gotcha. And, yeah. Right? Or Converse Weapons. And I, wanted those shoes so so bad if you look at ever look them up they're they're like super cool and like that was before uh jordan's were like a big deal yeah. jordan's like was the first basketball player that had like a signature shoe and then and then but i could never get those shoes i still have never you know still can't get them uh they're very hard to come by they're they're not they don't go and resell often but I bought uh, in grade nine, uh, they were, I can still remember, they were called the Converse ERX 400s. And okay. they were like, uh, uh, but they were like Laker colors. And I played basketball in those for like four years and I would not wow. give those up. They were like terrible, they were falling apart. And I like love those shoes. And a lot of the shoes I have now today that I started buying was like shoes that I wanted as a kid that I couldn't afford, right? And it's kind of like- That's cool. always how it is, isn't it? Like yeah. Every, everything you want as a kid, like once you have the ability to get it, you always yeah. try to go get it for sure. Yeah. So that, that's a, that's a, you, you got to look up that you got to look up the, um, it's actually kind of cool because Magic Johnson and Larry Bird hated each other. Uh, okay. And then yeah. they actually filmed a commercial for the, for the Converse shoes and they became friends. And that was okay. actually, that commercial shoot was how they became friends. So. Uh, I got to look that up for sure. Yeah, it, it, it was pretty cool. Now that, that was like, that was my, it wasn't, it wasn't as big as the Jordans. They were kind of big at the time, but it was, it was like, that was like my first, like, oh, I like, I kind of want this shoe. Like, why do I want this shoe so bad? Right. And I think that was kind of the start of it. Uh, but yeah, like you, Hey, there, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, um, I know you said you want to start a podcast, but I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. tell you, uh, there's a guy, I don't even know his name. But he, it's his his YouTube channel. I don't know if you watch it. It's called Wear Testers, and he like he just. I, I think yeah. I've seen. I think I've seen his. I'm telling his you, man. I'm telling you, with your interest and you want to be a podcaster, I I would be my dream job. Just talk about shoes on a on a YouTube yeah. channel, and yeah, it's pretty cool. So like, check it out. So hey, John. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna ask you because I was thinking of a story. So what's your um, 
what's like a sad sneaker story that you have like that you just like oh i didn't get that shoe or like i was you were so close to getting it. <laughs> oh i like i uh, i could go on all day about this but like there it, it is people don't know this right now um if you don't kind of follow into this um the it is like a really coveted shoe is nearly impossible to get right like it's the people you know spend thousands of dollars uh on bots to like basically get these shoes um yeah. off a of site but i think um the the one shoe that i i wanted and didn't didn't get was the jordan one the unc blue ones but i actually got them later but it was like it was like it took me forever to to yeah. to get those and um yeah and it's like you know people do this and it, it is kind of you know it is kind of interesting but i i think if i could have any shoe that i i would want one of those converse weapon shoes uh the, <laughs> the laker colors but i i like i look i look them up every now and then and they're they're really hard to yeah. find so they're 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 kind of tacky and I, I don't know but they but it's the same thing right i so, i um I, you, you, they're cool, but they, um, I would, you, like, if you ever actually look at the Jordan ones, uh, if you watch the last dance, I don't know how any, I don't know how Michael Jordan played basketball. Like they only seem like they're a shoe to wear with, you know, like with, with clothes, not, not to actually play basketball. Honestly, I, f I feel that way about every Jordan, like even the four, like, yeah. and like I've, I've played basketball in these and it was okay, but, um, no Jordan that I've worn feels like a basketball shoe. It's just like, like you said, I don't know how he played basketball in these shoes. Like, yeah, right. Honestly, like it's and it's crazy. Like no one really plays basketball in them nowadays. No, and that you're doing it for like the show or the scene or like the yeah the aura around it or whatever. But everyone wears them just for style, and it's kind of crazy how that transition was made. But like you said, I don't know how he played basketball. Yeah. But uh, I was. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's like, like when you watch basketball games. Like when I watch basketball games, like I, I can identify like most of the players' shoes. But if yeah. you watch like on, it's it's such a it's such a cult like a cultural thing right now. It's like oh that guy's wearing this. Oh like that celebrity's wearing this. So oh, those are you know Jordan yeah. threes. That's this right. And it's kind of neat to see that. Like it's it's such a it's such a big deal right now. I, I don't think it, you know I didn't realize it until I started. You know, uh, I joined that group and I was like, wow, this is like, this is like, like nobody's buying these shoes to like play basketball and they're, they're buying them just for like, for fashion. More, there are more Jordans worn, like, you know how like they have the, uh, the intro, like when the game's coming on and they show the players in their outfits coming yeah. into the stadium, yeah. more Jordans are worn then than on right. the court ever. Like right. that's crazy to me. Yeah. <laughs> As hey, so, well. so Deontay, I want to thank you for, for being on here today and just taking yeah, the time. Yeah. You know, you, I asked you what you're doing after you're like, I'm going to sleep, which I would have totally done. So <laughs> I appreciate you, uh, you know, being here. But, you know, for anyone listening, like whether you're a teacher, whether you're a student, when you're talking about like education, like what's what's one piece of advice you would want people to like walk away with, um, you know, thinking about the 2021, 20, 20 22 school year, you know, from the perspective of someone who's just recently, you know, you know, finishing school. Okay. So this, this might be a little, a little different. So it's not directed toward students nor teachers. Actually, okay. it's, it's the higher ups, the people who create our, uh, our curriculum and, and the ways that we have to learn. Change is inevitable. Mm -hmm. Change happens every day. I look outside every day and I see my grass getting taller. It gets taller because I didn't cut it. I didn't make a difference to it. Um, and the big thing is, is, is you have to do something in order to see change. Mm -hmm. But change can happen on its own. And change isn't necessarily always a good thing. And when it comes to school, things have changed, but not necessarily in the way in which that I believe personally that it should have changed. School is based off of a format in which it, I believe, is built for a, 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 a past time, a different age, mm -hmm. uh, the industrial age, getting people ready to work in assembly lines and do and work in car manufacturing shops and things of that nature. That's I feel as if 
how we learn today. And the world is a world that's filled with technology and so many advancements. And I feel the only thing that hasn't advanced in the past hundred years is our educational system. So to anyone with an influence on that, take time to look and really assess the situation and ask yourself, are we doing the children of today, or my bad, are we doing the children of tomorrow, the people of the future, are we doing them a disservice now? And if, you, if you're honest, you'll say yes, because we're not preparing our students and our youth for the future and what's to come. We're preparing them, preparing them for the past and we can't go back, we can only go forward. So I leave you with that. I ask you to change and I ask you to assess the current situation and make the necessary changes for development and greater results. That's it. <laughs> Just change. That's it. You know, so I don't know if you know this, like that's kind of, um, you know, that's what my focus is in my books, Innovators Mindset and uh, Innovate Inside the Box. And one of the things that why I wanted you on here is because I know you've had so many great teachers and you've had um, so many great teachers that have obviously made an impact on you and you talked about them on our other podcast. And one of the things that I really appreciated about you and what I see from you know the people I've worked in with Wes Alice is they helped you become your authentic self, not try to change you, but you know bring out who you are. And I'm watching you uh, you know, I'm an old guy that likes basketball shoes, you know, you know, been in education for 20 plus years and you like made a difference on me. And I think part of that, a uh, uh, part of your impact, you know, and part of the impact that schools have is they helped you find success in a way that was meaningful to you and, and tapping into your passions and you, you know, embodying that you are actually making such a difference on the people around you. And so it was just awesome to talk to you. And, uh, when you have your podcast, I'm expected to, you know, I'll, I'll be like the OG sneaker guy that comes <laughs> on there sometime, right? So, uh, but it was, it was just awesome to talk to you, and I, I loved it. And I and I, um, your your advice at the end was so perfect. And uh, and a lot of people hear me say that, and they're like, oh, whatever. But maybe if it comes from you, maybe they'll start listening, right? <laughs> I appreciate it. Everything you said, I, I would, I would say right back to you. Likewise, everything. Honestly, this is this is a great experience for me. This is the second podcast that's that I have been on that isn't mine or yeah. what I've been a part of with production. So I, I just appreciate the opportunity to, to, to continue giving me life experiences and things that I can build upon and add on in my repertoire. I appreciate you for, yeah. for being for being open and actually responding to a 17 year old kid that wants to just yeah. sit down and talk. That's, that's amazing. I appreciate all right, you. Ross. All right, man. So when I'm uh, when I'm in uh, Milwaukee, when I'm allowed to go there in NBA season, you and I are going to go to the Bucks game, okay? You in? Uh, I'll have to fly back, but I'll oh, hold where, you on where that. You where, are you go, where are you going? So I'm going. I'm moving to Detroit. On, uh, hey, in, I'll, go to Pistons. I'll go to Pistons game, man. Oh, that's, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. You can do that. Detroit's right across the street from Canada, so... <laughs> So hey, anytime, <laughs> it, yeah. If you if uh, if I'm there, I'd love to go to a basketball game with you, and uh, yeah, it'd be awesome. So I know that we we probably watch the shoes more than the game, but whatever. So yeah. whatever. But hey, uh, Deontay, thanks so much for being on. Thanks for taking the time, and uh, I know you inspired a lot of people. So I, I'm looking forward to people hearing this, and uh, yeah, it was it was really awesome to talk to you, and I look forward to more. Reach out anytime if you need anything. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for everyone listening as well. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye.